you're wondering how our new routine of going from homeschooling to public schooling slash after schooling is going, this one is for you. First off, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words and for your sweet messages. I've heard from so many of you, not only in the comments uh, from, my, from my last video, but also sending me messages on Facebook and in Instagram and through email. And I have been so touched. You are so wonderful. And I really, I'm, I'm so thankful and grateful for you. It was a surprise to many of you that we changed from homeschooling to public schooling and with total reason, right? I had just put up so many different videos about what we had planned for the next year and I had it all planned out for my second grader, my kindergartner and my preschooler. Um, and things changed. God has another plan for us this year and this is a season of change and there are so many treasures of lessons to be learned and um, that's how I'm attacking it. <laughs> I am attacking it with positivity, with um, grace for all of us because it's something completely new for all of us in this home. And it just is so touching and so incredibly um, heartwarming to receive so many lovely messages. So thank you to you. I, I wanted to go ahead and walk you through what we're doing in order to fit in what I would ideally have been doing with them had we been able to continue homeschooling. I have learned so much, so much from my Charlotte Mason inspired research here. Um, so many beautiful curriculum that I had planned for this year and I am going to implement it in one way or another. And so I wanted to walk you through how that looks like in our home. However, as much as I like my idealistic views of what our year should look like, reality comes into place and, you know, it's not gonna be exactly how I wanted it to be. However, it's gonna be richer and full of a uh, connection with my kids. Um, if I, you know, bend to the flow of how things can be, right? So I wanted to show you what I had planned and um, how it actually looks. <laughs> I think that that's really valuable here. And one of those places is in our morning basket. This has definitely changed. I had this idea that we would come down and sit down at the table and I'd have breakfast ready for them and we'd go ahead and get through our morning basket as much as possible at least. And I had already di um, divided it up into what we would do in the car and what we would do at you know, in our table time together in the morning. Well, it turns out that the school that my kids, my two older kids go to has breakfast and they enjoy eating breakfast with their friends. And it's a new novelty, maybe that'll wear off, maybe they'd like to be back at home um, later on in the year. But at least for right now, I'm going with the flow. And so they get to school even earlier than um, they need to be so that they can have breakfast with their friends. And so that means that we don't have the table time. So what I did was I took the readings that we would normally do in the morning, which they're, it's very light uh, what I had planned, but we just put that at night. And then um, there are some mornings when my boys are ready earlier. They might sit down and actually do their preschool pages and their kindergarten primer pages um, with their morning menu, like the, the, the restaurant menu holder. But that doesn't happen every morning and that's okay. They get to it when they get to it and if they don't get to it in the morning, generally when they come home from school, then they get to it then. And they're really happy to go ahead and do it. it kind of like they're very proud of getting that done. So I find that that has worked out for us. So our enrichment loop, I always had planned to do in the car. And that means that I had a different menu, you know, restaurant menu holder with the different pages already set up in the car. And that has our song lyrics in there for hymns, for folk song, and also for our painter, for our artist study. 
And what I did was I put the artist painting in the menu page, and then I also put like an artistic element that we are also going over. Um, now, since we're kind of scrunching our morning basket into the car as well, what we do is we listen to one song on the way to school, and they get to pick something from what would be in what would have been in the morning basket. So, for example, if they want to go through skip counting, um, they can. They get to choose. Um, if they want to go over their musical notes, they can. If we we always do family affirmation in the morning, so that we always fit in, and we always fit in a prayer as well. And we live pretty close to the school, so there's not that much that we can fit in, but we do do three or four main things every single day in the morning. And then in the afternoon, they pick up the menus and then they peruse them and they do something either on their own or they ask to do it with the whole family and we do it. It's very flexible. It's something that is flowing. We're finding our rhythm. It's not something that I'm uh, taking off boxes anymore. It's more like, let's see if we can do it. And if we do it, we do it with joy. And we do it because we want to, not because we have to. Right now, it's working. And let's see if that, you know, changes and morphs into something else. But for the start of the year, I'm pretty happy with it. In my previous video, I had said that ideally I would have them come home from school and they would go straight into some of their free reading and it would be like this peaceful thing where everyone would just want to like dive into their books or I do like a read aloud with the kids. It's so dreamy and realistic and unrealistic. <laughs> but um, I have quickly come to realize that that is, you know, a dream to work toward, but definitely not where they're at right now. When they come home, they want to move their bodies. They've been sitting down all day long, unfortunately, and they don't want to sit anymore. They don't want to just like lay down and be peaceful. They just want to be loud and, and do exciting things. And they're always asking me, what are we doing today? So, um, Obviously, I try to get their homework done first. I mean, I know they want to move their bodies, but I'm like, listen, just get this done because I have noted that if I let them just kind of like play and, and get their wiggles out and stuff, they complain so much about doing their homework later. And we're talking about like one page that's like back and front. It's not hard stuff, but it's hard for little ones that have been sitting down all day long. I mean, we are talking about a second grader, a kindergartner, and a preschooler here. The preschooler doesn't have any homework, but the other two do. So I have them wash their hands. They can change if they want to. And then they just have to come to the table, do their thing, get it done, knock it out. That is a point where I do make them like tick off that box. And then we have the afternoon. And then the afternoon, we go for walks, we go to the playground, we, um, I let them go outside in our yard and swing or play in their clubhouse. They are really loving painting their little clubhouse right now. And... <laughs> but as far as reading, free reading is concerned, we have also moved that into the bedtime time as well. So there's a lot of reading happening at bedtime. So let's just quickly get into that. Bedtime readings. Before we get any of the readings where I read aloud to them done, they have to do their free reading first. And that means that they have about 15 to 20 minutes every single night when they read on their own or I sit with them when they read to me. Sometimes we get to this part of the night a little earlier than others, so I'll let them pick something. Otherwise, I pick something from the free reading list for my daughter, and she has to read out loud to me for like two or three pages. Usually that'll take her about 10 or 15 minutes, and then I have her read to herself while I do the little guy, my kindergartner, and we'll read, you know, learn to read style books like Bob books or dashing dash into learning books um, or any anything where it's you know kindergarten level 
where he's sending out letters and he's doing his reading and really getting proficient and, and practicing the letter sounds. So we do two or three books like that where he's doing his smaller ones and she's you know staying on her um, chapter books. And then we get into the read alouds. All right, so if you follow Ambleside online, there are a lot of books to read. Now, my kiddos are still young, so they only really have two or three main readings that they have to get to, you know, for that day, if they want to keep up with the weekly readings. I have tacked on the morning reading that I usually would have taken out. Um, so let's say if we're doing some sort of religious text um, or catechism or anything, we do that first at night and then they get to choose what they want to read and they are so loving little pilgrim's progress that is something that i actually have changed from Ambleside online we're supposed to be reading pilgrim's progress it's a much harder book to read but my little guy the kindergartner he was supposed to start reading little pilgrim's progress in his primer and so since it's based on the same story I went with the younger read, something that's a little bit easier to digest for the older one. It has beautiful illustrations and she's really happy. She looks forward to that book every single day and asks it for, asks me to read it. So we do Little Pilgrim's Progress almost every night and we're not supposed to be doing, but I limit it to one or two chapters a night. And then that gives us space to do that week's, re well, not that week's readings, but the allotment of that week's readings for that evening. So for nature study, ideally we would do this weekly. Up to now, we've only been able to do it one time, sadly. In four weeks, only one time. And this hits me so hard because that was like my very favorite thing. Is that, can you say that? <laughs> that was my most favorite thing to do with my kids was nature study. And so I need to carve out more time to do nature study. Um, however, the one Saturday morning that we were able to get to it, it was like we fell right into our normal routine. The kids listened along. They were into um, learning the drawing portion of it and then tagging everything afterward, labeling everything. And it was just really, really great. One thing I will say is that I need to work with my daughter with her patience on her own skill level. She sometimes finds it very difficult to understand why what she wants to draw and sketch isn't translated in, you know, in her own drawing. And so she did get upset um, a little bit about what it looked like in the end. She wanted it to be better. And so it's just something that we need to work toward. It's about building patience. It's about continuing to do nature study and drawing lessons so that she can see the progression and starting from someplace where she wasn't very proud of it to a place where she does feel really proud of her, um, very proud of her work. Narrations. I admittedly ask very little for narrations, but I do just go straight into conversations about it. I asked them what they liked about it, how did it make them feel, what were the funny bits, what were the parts that they like really remember. And then I find that by not asking them straight up, give me a narration of that story, um, I'm getting a lot more from them. Even from the, my little guy, he is like all about it and sometimes they kind of talk over each other. So that's something I do need to work on. I need to kind of have them have their own separate conversations about it and then teach them the fine art of conversation in that. Um, so I find that this is way more than what I was doing last year. And it's not because of an after schooling thing, a public schooling thing, a homeschooling, it's me learning, learning what works for us, learning what narration really is about. And it's about helping them commit things to memory and making a connection to it and so that's what I've been having a lot of fun with doing is I'm, I'm fine that I'm finally giving myself the space and the flexibility to just be and have really good conversations and so we've had hilarious conversations actually the funniest conversations have come up from 
on Shakespeare of all places because we're doing the Shakespeare readings and two gentlemen of Verona like my daughter and I were like laughing uncontrollably to the point where like we had already finished the story and she wanted me to read it to her again the very next night and then the next week after that she's like do you think we can go back to two gentlemen of Verona and like that she really enjoyed not only the story but the conversation and the laughter and the moments that we had together with that so that was that was great and then with my little guy with preschool primer we went into the little red hen and oh my god he just was like because they repeat the same sentence um no not i i believe is that over and over again so he it just became part of his thing and he would like put it in different voices and it was it was so animated and such a great time that we have found that just with these fairy tales and making it a habit to spend at least an hour and a half i know it's so much time but i i'm craving that connection with them and trying to fit in the things that i really loved about our homeschool last year so i make it a point to be at least an hour an hour and a half with my kids every single night and we read and yeah we're not doing narrations how i was expecting them to do it last year with a lot of detail and it being a little bit more formal it's much more informal and we are really thriving in the informality of it in the laughter that comes from it definitely the connection that comes from there too so narrations this year they look a little different and i think it's for the best all in all, it's been a really smooth transition. Um, they're thriving, they're doing really well, and they're really excited to be among friends. And they're both making friends, and they're both just enjoying this different routine. I think my little guy keep, continues thinking like, oh, you know, I'm gonna enjoy this because I'm gonna be going back home. So you never know that homeschooling might be something for him in the future. My daughter, on the other hand, she loves going to school. She loves the social aspect of it. And so I am just really enjoying then filling in all the areas that I kind of feel sometimes like for her, she could be challenged a little bit more. And so I try to challenge her at home. And you know what? They Neither of them had to be tested. They didn't need to be placed. It's a question that I get a lot. Um, if, you know, as homeschoolers, did they have to be placed? At least not in the district that my kids are going into. Um, I can go into this in a lot more detail as far as what they needed in order to be put into school. But that's not one of the things. They didn't need to be tested into anything. If you want to get them into a gifted program or into um, an honors program, if your school has that, you may need to test into those things. So as for me, I'm focusing on the good. Homeschooling left such a special mark on me. And I don't know that I could operate any differently now. I. I'm so enthusiastic about the things that we can do together after school that I feel that we're getting to a good marriage of the two. And I have realized that we're more intentional with our time now. Um, we don't let time just kind of slide away in all the nooks and crannies of our day. We learn from the time that we're apart and we learn when we're together. And that that's where I'm focusing on. So thanks again to you guys. Thank you so much, so much for your kind words, for your beautiful sentiments, for uh, hanging in with me in this update video. It's a little bit different than what I usually do. And um, I just wanted to let you know if this is something that you're in this season as well of change, it's gonna be okay. You have to go into it with intentionality, with a lot of love and compassion and grace for each other and for yourself and in the end we'll all see that whatever season we're in whatever it is that our life and whatever path it's on there are nuggets of truth there are moments and lessons to learn from and 
that's what we have to take from them to be better, to grow stronger, to be better role models to our kids, and um, to live a happy and peaceful and loving life. And so that's where I'm at right now. Thank you again. I hope that you'll stick around to see more updates and other things that we're doing. I'd like to give you an update more on Poetry Tea Time, which I did not talk about today. Um, and that is like, it needs its own video. <laughs> so I will be back again soon. I hope that you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Bye.